Okay, let's welcome our last uh, group. Thanks. Do you mind if I make it book full screen? Uh, that's good enough. Or uh, maybe just in. Make it bigger. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so if you go to me. No, no. Um, yeah. All right. Okay, right. That's fine. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, all right. So, um, I think we're, yeah, we're the last group, I guess, so hopefully I won't have enough energy. But um, our aim with this one was to try and um, see if we could come up with some problem which uh, used some satellite data. I'm quite interested in using that. Um, we raised a lot, a lot of different ideas, but we, we started off looking at um, power plants. So, um, I guess the background is the task of the you know, when you burn fossil fuels, uh, you release some kind of pollutants into the atmosphere. Uh, and coal is probably the worst event of all of these. And it's, uh, some estimates, it's accounted for 30% of the global average temperature. So that's pretty high. Um, so there are, in multiple countries, efforts to phase this out. Uh, there are reporting standards that vary widely across countries. So having some sort of tool that can monitor um, the generation, the sort of generation of the power plants, uh, could be useful in, in terms of um, holding nations to account in, in meeting these targets. Um, so we use data from um, this satellite here, which is Sentinel Two satellite. So this is an ESA satellite. ESA is Sentinel program is their Earth observation program. ESA is what European European Space Agency. Yeah. yeah. So it's a supranational organization. It's not. Part of the EU, but it's sort of overlap between the EU member states and the ESA, which is really high. Um, but they uh, have a specific focus on science. Um, this satellite in particular, there's, there's actually two satellites and they go in tandem, so they're 180 degrees apart from each other. They sort of go around a little bit um, and they do this they just scan, um, basically take pictures uh, at different um, bandwidths on the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Um, the instrument on board uh, takes um, images at 13 different spectral bands um, and the resolution of these varies. Uh, we focus on the data with at least 20 meter resolution, so 20 meter and 10 meter. So that is, has got pretty good coverage from sort of 490 nanometers, so very much like towards the blue end of the visible spectrum, all the way down to sort of short wave infrared at uh, 160. Uh, just in 10 to 20 nanometers. So it's pretty broad coverage. Um, and to the 10 and 20 meters, that's ground resolution, basically. Um, there's lots of pre processing that ESA does. We took the highest level available for this data set, which is still fairly low level, but it's got lots of denoising and um, some kind of uh, interpolation and resigning. So, um, but there's sort of higher level products as well. Um, so that was the data that we used. Um, we'll come on, Daniel's gonna talk later about the limitations of using this data for the specific task. Um, but, you know, we used it because it had good resolution as well. So. Um, and then we need some truth data. As I said, reporting standards vary massively from country to country. Uh, the US um, has pretty good uh, consistent data um, because they have this standard form EIA 93, which has been the same standard since 2008. So they've got data for each of the power plants in the US, monthly data going back for 2008. And they collect things like how much fuel it's used, how much electricity it's generated, how efficient they are. Um, so we collated data just from a 10 year period. Um, and yes, as I said, it's monthly. So it's like how much has that power plant generated in a month? So there's, again, I'm just going to come on to this later, but and um, we had to find some way of tallying up between this monthly generation and then the snapshots, which we get from the satellites. Um, the satellites, because of the orbits, the revisit time, so how often they, they image the same location varies depending on where you are in, in, in the world, but it's at worst about 10 days. Um, I think around the US, they reckon it's about three or four days, uh, depending on the, on the latitude. Um, so this is an example of just basically the truth data. So you get the power plants. Uh, actually, this is we've done some processing to this, but uh, generation figures for each month, uh, and then we have a separate uh, data set which contains the 
locations of these plants. Yeah, so that's about all I'm going to say. Philip is going to talk about data. Is that data? I'm going to talk. You're going to talk about the CNN. Data. Data. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, so on to the, the satellite data. Uh, so ESA is uh, very kind. They provide a uh, like fairly uh, simple API views. However, uh, this API is still like the bottom in our uh, yeah project. It's because first of all, images are huge. Uh, so so we uh, they are basically uh, like covering there's like they are distributed in, in like tiles of 100 times 100 kilometers and i think each image is like or like each so each band of these images are like uh, between 30 to 150 megabytes uh, like so so they are they're big uh, and um, the API they only allow like two concurrent downloads per account, uh, making it uh, right. So because they also have like rather slow servers. <laughs> so but but basically what we did was to from this uh, from the from some other the other table uh, Alec mentioned we we get coordinates for. Power plants. We we query the the Sentinel API for uh, for like power plant for the for images containing these coordinates. Then we uh, download basically as many <laughs> images as we can. It takes a lot of time. We ended up downloading I think like three hundred images, looking basically like this. This is. So this is a true color uh, image. Uh, the ones we're interested in are we we ended up using eight different bands between you know, like yeah four hundred nanometers to I think thousand five hundred nanometers. But yeah, this is like one example. Um, and yeah, this was as I said the the downloads you you were only allowed to do two at a time, so. Not much distribution here, but we move on to the processing of this data. Uh, so as so now we have these huge images. We want to extract something we can use us as used to like uh, study our power plants. What we and we know the locations of our power plants. So so basically, what we do is. Is uh, is yeah, here, here we have some some functions cropping out uh, the area around power plants. We do this for for all our files, and we we do it by by yeah, saving saving lists of of the files as an um, RDD and then distributing these uh, functions uh, or yeah for popping and then saving. New images, uh, and this will then result in in images like this. And here we see six, six different wavelengths here uh, over a power plant in Alaska. Uh, and yeah, I don't know if if you can say much about this. But but so so basically we have a power plant here in the middle. We uh, prop prop from the thirty megabyte file uh, uh, at basically a five times five kilometer square. We resize it to uh, if we don't want twenty yeah yeah with twenty times with twenty eight sized images uh, and. Yeah, save them to to a DBFS uh, directory <laughs> somewhere in Ireland. I suppose in an ideal world, you would have a tile server which has tiles of an appropriate yeah. size. But as we mentioned, the ESA uploads the data in these big 
30 megabyte, 30 megapixel tiles. So it's, um, yeah, so so maybe we keep like, I don't know, 5% of the data we don't, yeah. uh, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah. Uh, they, they're, uh, they haven't designed their API for, for this for, easy. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll nice to you. So I'll briefly go through kind of the Maybe how we do it. Oh. Yes. So I'll briefly go for kind of the last of the data preparation, the processing, and then how essentially how we do the training or what. I'll try to keep the training pretty brief since I guess we've seen that a few times already. Uh, but essentially, again, we check pointers for whatever later on. Uh, and then we do uh, the processing. So essentially, not the processing per se, but essentially matching our tiles or our uh, cropped images with the truth value. So the uh, output of the power plants and megawatts in this case. Uh, and we're making kind of a brave like assumption here that that's that's how, that has that Alec mentioned that we are combining them on a per month basis. We are estimating that a snapshot done during this month would correspond to the sum of the megawatt outputs during the same month, which uh, maybe we'll talk about a little bit more later. But, uh, so essentially combine those two by, uh, well, I guess, a plain dictionary where we combine the key and the key being the plant ID and the date. Um, we then generate the data, simple enough, uh, using essentially the labels as one and then the File paths as the other, so we, so we can load in the data in more distributed manner later on. And then, uh, yes, can you give a brief outline of the uh, uh, kind of our independent variable here? So, the net generation of the different power paths we have in our data sets. It's kind of like leaning to the left a little bit, but it's essentially an overview of what we have. So, they range quite a lot in magnitude, and the outputs, so some of them are very small, essentially just like, yeah for a small like institution or whatever, and some of them are like statewide. But are these power plants like worldwide or is it just focused on the it's, the, it's the FPN US. Okay. Um all right, and so what we do with these different bandwidths is that we essentially stack them into one type of image with so containing information all in the bandwidths. So if we think we have eight, which is I don't remember the exact bands, but uh, they're kind of yeah. distributed over. And the short is this uh, 419. Yeah, yeah, 11 and 12 with a short wave infrared, but then it's uh, it was like 10, 11, 19, So there's something along the missile spectra and some short wave infrared as well. Um, we uh, just prepared a data loader for use, for use with the Horvath runner or Horvath in general, uh, where we essentially load the data sets using the uh, size and rank um, using the file pass, of course, so it didn't work through the manner. And kind of the, the architecture we went to here is just very, very basic standard out of the box scene and kind of, uh, mm -hmm. but we are seeing this as we're kind of facing this as a regression problem. So we want to predict the, the output or net generation. Right? Um, so there's the structure. And then as many other have done, we uh, used, in this case, we use Keras. So with Horobot, um, train this in a more distributed manner. And uh, I think it's worth mentioning here that the distribution is over the file names, no. right? So, no, it's okay. So the distribution is over the file names. So we load the data sets using kind of as we predefine the file names in the data loader. So if you look at here, right? So we predefine it and then distribute over that. And then we do the training and we do the, the predictions later on, which I will do right now. Cool. Um, yeah, so the training actually, uh, we didn't have a huge number of data points, mostly because of the volume of data we were able to download. Um, but uh, so the training only took about half an hour, um, which is reflected in the quality of the model, I think. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, the the prediction step here, basically, because we save the checkpoints, we basically create a model with exactly the same structure and then reload the weights, um, and then we can uh, produce some predictions. So this is a sort of example of what we might be able to produce. Um, 
So these are some test power plants that weren't included in the training. And then um, you could say, okay, well, this uh, power plant here, which is operated by the public service company in Colorado, um, and then it makes an output of 148,000 uh, megawatt hours, uh, which seems a bit high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not as high as uh, <laughs> 6.8 million. Uh, Seriously? Or possibly okay. Okay. Um, but the, 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 um, but you can see how this might be useful. So as well as, as, well as kind of point out, this is only our in the US, this, that's where we get the training data from. Um, the idea then would be that you can apply this, if you want to put your model trained, you can apply it um, to our conversation where we have a lot to and you can just pick images from around that. Um, so yeah, um, any anyway, questions about that? Should we phrase this as a regression problem? That's right, yeah. You we could, could you yeah. predict like in megawatts, megawatts hours, megawatts hours, megawatts hours. And yeah. about like the trainings that are those numbers, like what the audience is. So, um, there, like, uh, if you don't show this on the last one, um, they are, you know, they go up sort of about as high as that, but like the bulk of them are, are much, are sort of on the order of 10,000. Do you use the square plus? Yeah, we used to. Um, but I mean, we will go in the limits later where this is not necessarily yeah. like uh, the best model. <laughs> like zero and the answer is 1d6 then you get an error of 1d12 that's in a type of the yeah. <laughs> okay so you have to conclude then I guess yeah. <laughs> so again we've used the uh, setting to data of these uh, visible a lot of these different wavelengths right, from uh, some visible, some short wave infrared uh, over the United States. Uh, but kind of as we, so when we started out with this idea, uh, our main idea was to reduce uh, other wavelengths which corresponded to essentially atmospheric measurements. So, Sentinel 5. Yeah, from Sentinel 5 is from another, from another satellite in the end of the report. Um, Essentially, on would be carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, and so forth, right? So, which I think would make a lot of sense. Uh, however, we kind of uh, captured a few issues with this is that the resolution is not great. Um, now we have 20, 20 meters, right? But it was essentially kilometer, kilometer, or oh, even one they were, or like seven, seven kilometers. So, it's difficult to work with that kind of. Uh, we want to put for this type of problem we're going to break the output, especially for the smaller plants. Um, and another issue I guess we have is that we have had difficulty to get kind of get enough data as uh, I mean I guess time constraints, but also the uh, the ESA access and downloading these huge files. And uh, and we kind of as we kind of alluded to before, we made a few like important assumptions. <laughs> which are not necessarily the best of assumptions, uh, but we worked with it. And that's the, essentially, that we, uh, when we want to define the true families, right? we merge the, the snapshot at a specific time. We don't know exactly when the snapshot was taken, or we know exactly when the snapshot was taken, but we don't know exactly uh, which, what type of megawatt hour that corresponds to, right? This is a summation, a summation over the month. Uh, what we made the assumption today would match relatively well. Uh, we're not sure they do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's best to Yeah, and uh, I think that, but in general, I think like this is kind of a feasible method, but we will have to uh, make use of more thin data for this. So the abstract uh, method thing would be fine, but we have to redefine the problem a little bit to match with that. Also, potentially find a better way to match up the true values. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess you didn't try any, because uh, I mean, this is great, I think. It's a great prototype and yeah. But but like what I recall is the Na National Oceanic Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, NOAA in the US. They're the ones that make all these climate, you know. Yeah, I mean that's a, do they they don't have satellite. They data. do. So there's lots of other sources they seem to use. Like I think um, particularly for the weather um spectra, like um 
is kind of have a global focus, but actually like for specific countries, NASA has got ones that have much better coverage for the US, for example. Um, so that's something you can use. Uh, I think in general, um, you could probably um, you could probably distribute this a lot better. I think the what we did in terms of like loading the data and then we did distribute the kind of stacking, um, but I think you could kind of package up that whole um, the whole thing and then have that almost modular depending on where you were in the world. Mm -hmm. So long as your output was um, just in some sense comparable and then you train across it, but that, that, that's training say you do it. Because basically what we did was do a lot of read and write some huge flat tiles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's a few, there are a few um, uh, organizations that are like pushing for um, uh, like these to be like more standardized services mm -hmm. that you can just handle across these kind yeah. of so. I think yeah, in fact, you guys, are, some of some of you may already be using this, but this the file format mm -hmm. optimal for this that I'm aware of is Delta.io. It's a Linux Foundation thing. It builds what's called a Delta Lake. So this that data is ideal for a Delta Lake because you basically can partition it by timestamp mm -hmm. and uh, geospatial blocking. So then when you do the query, it's instantaneous, uh, basically. Yeah. So, but I know Elasticsearch is quite a lot. Of, uh... Yeah, it's uh, yeah, but this is arbitrarily scalable, like okay, it's yeah. uh, but that's in fact it's parquet with JSON, so you guys already know parquet. It's just that uh, it's a very cute way to fight the small files problem, right? That's the that's the big problem for big data, right? Too many small files, the metadata gets too big, and then so then what uh, what you have to do when you're writing like parquet type stuff, one row at a time because things are arriving at you. Then all we basically do is okay, you you keep record of uh, some metadata, uh, and then periodically you send out this compressor or, or or something that basically takes the small files and makes them big, basically, right? And that gives you asset guarantees for those of you into databases, right? Thermicity, consistency, isolation, and what is D? I'm looking at you, you know, so you should, um, yeah. Acid, you can Google Acid. So that's it. So then, then you know, if because all the other stuff you're doing, which is like taking the lat long of the power plant and then going and zoom cutting, all of that is totally reusable on top of a Delta Lake architecture. Are there any other questions? Approximately how many power plants are there in the US? In total or for coal? Uh, for coal. I think that was like 250 uh, No, it was more than that. Because that was the primary source. I oh, think yeah. in total it was about 2,000. 2,000. Oh, okay. So that's, that should be sufficient. But it sort of depends how you count because um, this is generator level rather than power plant level. So one power plant will have so many generators. Process. So then you have to do some like matching between power plants and generators. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking if there's like very few power plants. Um, they are all in like different places, maybe you there's lots. Uh there's actually you can show um, what was that what was that called? It's called yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what was it called like energy justice? Okay, so this is this is all about uh, energy justice and fight yeah. greenwashing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, have a great, they have a great website. Well, okay. Amadine is still here. See, your uh, idea of revolution has gone on. This is not This is this website's too good. Yeah, no, no, no. You can also do a Google search if you want. No, that's the same. I'm sorry. <laughs> You can you can search for ah oh, no okay well no I can't find it yeah but you can you can you can Google search in DuckDuckGo and then to go to Google search and because some of these things Google might be yeah there you go yeah um just check some keyword there <laughs> Earth Justice this one. No. Okay. 
But they had a nice overlay of the difference there about that in the US. But you can add that uh, that uh, display HTML of that at the end of your presentation, right? Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. So the, like you see, this, these black ones here are the coal ones, and they're pretty much where the coal is, right? So up, up along the Appalachian Mountains and around them. Um, and then there's you know, some ones other than spots around. Alaska's also got like a little bit more. Don't know if that answers your question. So just continue for a couple of minutes. I'm going to hunt down the FICA. They may have delivered it to the wrong house. So I'll sort it out. Okay, so the, the reason I was asking is uh, so imagine you have like if you power plants in the US and then you create a clean example like 40 power plants. Yeah. Then like even if you have a lot of data like for each power plant, it might be quite hard to make the enterprise of the policy. I mean yes. to homogenous kind of out of you or I think uh, there's a few parts there. Like, I think one is like um we're not, you're not we're not treating this as like a can we detect where they are? Like I think that would be a hard problem. Yeah. But it would be like let's say okay, we know where they are. You might have like a um, like the question is, what's their production over time? So if you can train it using like some choose data for a specific point in time, then you check. I mean, I was thinking maybe like if there's very little variation, like, like yeah. you, you take images and that maybe if there's very little variation, how each side looks, yeah, then maybe. So yeah, the, which is why I think that this data is probably not the right one to use because it, it's visible in light. Like we probably want to be looking more at the because um, the Sentinel Five data is looking it basically is much higher levels of processing where it um, estimates gas column concentrations for things like um, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, and things like that. Um, and that's probably more relevant information um, that's less likely to depend on. The topology. Yeah, um, I, I think like the central two date that they have like actively processed to to show the, the like ground to see show the like actual earth surface level of uh, of the images. Well, they have tried to remove the uh, noise from the atmosphere, which is basically what we're interested in here. So, but uh, we have to do a do something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I suppose, like, um, yeah, like, if, like maybe this question doesn't work. Is it? Thank you. 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 Thank you.